What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I will be teaching you the easiest way to solo flawless the Prophecy Dungeon. This dungeon has the nicest solo flawless emblem in the game in my opinion, and I still rock it to this day. And with Season of the Wish being the longest season we've ever had, combined with the fact that we have solo operative on the artifact, there's never been a better or easier time to solo flawless this dungeon. I soloed it on every character, and then I did a solo flawless clear on my titan using the strategies that I like the best. So I will give you my advice on what is best to use so that you can get this beautiful emblem. I won't be going over mechanics too in depth here as I'm assuming that if you're attempting a solo flawless, you at least know what to do for every encounter. So let's get right into it. There's a skip for the first part, but we are doing this legit. So you just have to take out the knights. This part is very easy, but if you have Wither Horde or Anarchy, then I suggest using those here as it allows you to do damage over time to a knight, and then you can hide in the dark or stay in the light depending on what motes you need. You don't need a damage over time weapon here, I did it without one as well, but it does make things easier. So one thing I will say is all my loadout suggestions are solar because it is extremely OP this season. You get 25% from Radiant and Ember of Torches, and then a 15% weaken from Revitalizing Blast. Throw in solo operative, and that is a 65% damage buff before we even factor in surges. Yeah folks, the power creep is real. Plus, we can abuse restoration on every class with healing grenades and ember of Empyrean if we want for amazing survivability. Anyways, the first boss is a pushover. Getting to damage phase is what will be difficult here. If this is your first solo flawless attempt, then I recommend running it just solo to refine your strats and learn the intricacies of each encounter. For the first boss, utilizing cover and doing good ad management on the scions is key, but when it comes to damage, the boss is a pushover. I won phase with a ton of different options. I didn't outright kill because I was holding the checkpoint and testing various strats, but I would have been able to kill with 4th horseman and surrounded bequest, parasite and a celestial golden gun and fusion rifle, anarchy and a fusion rifle, grand overture, the lament, legend of Acrius. you get the picture. So my suggestion would definitely be either the Lament or Legend of Acrius. Both go extremely hard. One thing with Acrius though, you need to do a regular melee to proc trench barrel. A powered melee doesn't work unfortunately. The Titan Bonk build is amazing for soloing any dungeon, and this is no exception. Use Synthos and just bonk everything, and then you can hot swap to Pyrogales and do a one shot hammer that deals massive damage. For Warlock, I love Sunbracers. It is great for taking out the adds at the start, and also really good for boss damage if you leave a couple adds up. And on Hunter, Assassin's Cowl is great for the first part, and then you can hot swap to Celestial Nighthawk for damage. I highly recommend having a pre-DPS loadout and then a DPS loadout to swap to. There is lots of cover to make your swap right before dunking the last set of motes, and this is important to do because it ensures you will have max armor charges for weapon surge to take out the boss quickly. Partway through DPS, add spawn to make the boss immune. That is when you want to pop your super because it goes through immunity. Or you can just kill the goblins that are making the boss immune. Well of Radiance is amazing here because you can just keep dealing damage, but this boss has so little health that you likely won't even have to worry about the goblins. I suggest getting a strat that you like and can consistently one phase with because like I said, getting to damage here is the toughest part of this fight. Once we take out the Phalanx Echo, it is off to the wasteland. I always completely ignore the big minotaurs, don't even waste your ammo on them. If you still have some heavy from the boss fight, or if you have heavy on the ground, then use Xenophage here. It is great for taking out all the adds and the blights. A bow is also nice for the hobgoblin snipers, always take them out first. Then just focus on the blights and the other adds. Bastion also one shots the blights, so if you don't use Xeno, use Bastion. Take out 3 sets of 3 blights and you're done. Onto the cube room, this room does have some RNG. Sometimes you will get a room with no Toland on any wall, so you will have to do more rotations. But with how strong we are now, that is really not a big deal. I recommend a solar primary and healing grenades for keeping restoration up with Ember of Empyrean the whole time. Then a kinetic sniper for the hobgoblins, and once again Xenophage. If you don't have Xeno, any machine gun should work. One piece of advice is make sure you don't use your class ability when you're holding 5 motes or you will lose them. Watch out for the snipers when you go to dunk the moats. Other than that, this encounter is very easy and a shell of its former self. Taking out the hobgoblins spawn in the knights, and taking out the knights spawn in the hobs. So every room, I try to kill the hobgoblins as quickly as possible, and then I take out the acolytes and stuff so no adds are around, and then I take out the knights in either the light or the dark, and then dunk and leave. 
That is why Xenophage is so nice. It is great at quickly taking out the hobgoblins or knights from anywhere in the room. The end of the cube room has the two phalanxes, but again, these guys basically just fall over. From here we have Rainbow Road. You can either sparrow down or use the jumping platforms. If you use the platforms, I suggest a sniper or wish ender for vandals and watch out for the phalanxes as they'll boop you off. I went down this road in a variety of ways, so it is just dealer's choice. Go the way that is most comfortable for you. I am very comfortable with jumping and using an eager edge sword, so that's what I did. But just do what will get you down the safest. Then we are on to the final boss, and there are basically two optimal DPS strats in my opinion. But first we have to get to DPS. So for the knights and stuff, I just like to clear out the room very quickly off the start, so watch the color of the three corners. Usually there is one and two for light and dark. It is seldom three of one kind. So I just focus on taking everything out and getting a dunk in. The start of this fight is the most dangerous time because there are three Kel Echoes up, one in each corner. So once you dunk, an ogre spawns in. And don't forget about this ogre. I always dunk and then spawn kill it. Once there are two Echoes, the room is much more manageable. See what colors and motes you need and dunk another color. Once you are down to one, it is quite easy. Dunk your last set of motes and head down to DPS. You don't even have to kill this last ogre if you don't want. You can just leave. As you are falling through the quicksand, that is when you want to swap to DPS. For DPS, I recommend two options. Dragon's Breath with a solar fusion like Aramite with Controlled Burst, Cartesian Coordinate with Vorpal, or Royal Executioner with Reservoir Burst. And use Taken Spec if you have it, and if not, use Boss Spec. Or you can use Wither Horde and an Apex Predator with Bait and Switch. I like to save my super for the end because it is much more safe to use it there. The boss can teleport you which is super annoying. A celestial golden gun you can pop right away, but a well of radiance or pyrogel slam you definitely want to hold to the end. The big key with this boss fight is knowing its movement patterns. I have a one phase up on my channel if you want to see the whole DPS rotation, but yeah, you need to know when to move in this boss fight, and if you are too far away you will die to dark entropy at times 10. On a titan, I like to use the bonk hammer to my advantage and take out the hobgoblins with it. This gives me radiant from ember of torches and makes another orb of power. Because of this, I run argent ordinance because I can always be getting orbs. On the other characters though, do not run argent ordinance. Just run triple solar surge and time dilation mods for your DPS loadout. Damage over time weapons are great on this boss, so that is why I like wither horde or dragon's breath. Hell, even anarchy is still great here. If you don't deal damage to the boss on his platform, he will move quickly, but if you can always be dealing damage, you will get more time on each platform. Just watch out for the darkness blast that he throws because like I said, they will knock you back and really mess up your DPS. And the biggest advice I have is to move before the boss does. The hobgoblins spawn in and they can kill you pretty easily, so you want to get a good damage in on a platform and then move before the boss. Take out the hobgoblins, then go back to DPS. Again, practice this a few times to get the hang of it. If you have the movement patterns down, then this should be a very comfortable two phase. And like I said, at the end, go all in with your super. And make sure you stick him with Wither Horde or a rocket right before he teleports, because he will still take damage. Anyways, that is all the tips and tricks I have for the Prophecy Dungeon. As I said earlier, it has never been easier to solo than right now. The fact that a one phase is pretty doable on the final boss now is insane and really shows the power creep. Utilize solar to its fullest extent with radiant and restoration, and I have no doubt you can easily get this beautiful emblem. If you're still watching, thanks for watching to the end. Leave a like if this video helped you, and subscribe for more helpful content. Good luck solo flawlessing the Prophecy Dungeon, and take care.